Hey, welcome back to the channel. Have you ever had a diagnostic code come up on the dash of your truck? Check engine light. You don't know what it means. You don't know what's wrong. So typically you have to go to an auto parts store to have them pull the code or worse yet, schedule time at the dealer. Well, how would you like to be able to do that yourself and be able to clear the code if it's non-essential at the same time as having a live engine monitor showing all the different characteristics of your engine live in real time and do this for about 15 bucks. Stick with me through the rest of the video. I'll show you how. All right, 6,400 miles. I got my first check engine light on the truck. Off to the local auto zone to see if we can clear the code and find out what it is. Well, that wasn't good. The surly counter clerk was really not happy about having to pull the error code on my truck through her analyzer. After she plugged into my diagnostic port, it pulled the, this report up, which literally gave me zero information about the error code and what it meant. At least the code was cleared, but let's just say it wasn't a positive experience. The only good thing out of this situation is that I didn't have to wait for a week to schedule an appointment at my dealer and wait around for a day only to hear them come up with the same outcome in diagnosis. Let's get real for a moment. These are enormously complex machines. These are essentially 6,000 pound rolling CPUs. You need to be an educated and empowered consumer if you're gonna drive these. You must have more information to survive in today's world. You just can't be taken advantage of by the system that just doesn't understand what you're driving. So here's my opinion. You must take charge of your own stuff. And what I'm showing you here today is a very inexpensive and effective way to do so. So let's dive into OBD2 and diagnostics. Could I get my own analyzer to read and clear error codes, just like the counter clerk at AutoZone? Could I accomplish this without spending hundreds of dollars? And could I add these capabilities without making my interior cabin look like a fast and furious rice rocket? Please understand that I'm not a vehicle diagnostics expert. I'm just an auto nerd showing you the steps that I went through to fix my own problem. So you don't have to waste the time that I did learning this stuff. I hope you take what I show you here today and improve on what I've done. I figure if I can learn this in a couple of days, anybody can do this and anybody can add these capabilities to their vehicle. Let's get started. What is OBD2? OBD stands for Onboard Diagnostics and OBD2 is the second version of this standard. If you're wondering if your car has OBD2, it probably does. If it was built after 96, there's a good chance that it's got it. This is what a standard connector looks like if you're curious about what the different signaling Leads are for, there you go, you can build your own. So on my Ford F-150, the OBD2 connector is above my left knee on the driver's side. So it's not easy to see, it's actually well below the dash. You have to kind of feel around for it. But once you know where it is, it's pretty much the same place on every vehicle. Now there's different types of OBD2 diagnostic tools. I looked around in Amazon and, and there's everything that runs the gamut from really cheap things to much more expensive professional devices. These are dedicated plug-in diagnostic scanners. General purpose is for error code diagnostics and performance monitoring, like if you're running a shop or if you just want to be a better consumer in terms of diagnosing your own vehicles. It's really not meant for in-cab monitoring. Price of these is anywhere from 35 to 300, probably a whole lot more for really professional units. However, we can also go with a cheaper option here, get a Bluetooth dongle that just plugs in and does all the diagnosis and then sends information back and forth to an Android phone, or it could be an iPhone, but I'm going to be showing you an Android phone example that has an app that's meant to be scanning these what are called PIDs. So you can connect to these scanners through Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. I recommend Bluetooth to send the data back and forth to the smartphone. The smartphone app analyzes selected PIDs that you will define, and you'll see what those are in a minute. App can also pull error codes and analyze and or clear them if you want. And the price of this type of solution is anywhere from $10 to $200, depending on how much you want to spend for that Bluetooth scanner. 
and the apps are generally $5 or less than that. And I'm assuming no phone cost because usually everybody's got a phone lying around that they can repurpose for something like this, especially if they're an Android. Now, the Bluetooth smartphone app combo is the way I went to solve my requirements. I spent 12 bucks for the dongle, and I could have installed any number of free apps, although I chose to go hog wild and splurge on the 495 Torque Pro app. You can spend significantly more than I did on better scanners, and you might be able to get better access to more PIDs and better displays. I don't know. I haven't gone down that road yet. All I know is what I can do with a $12 scanner. The rest of this video is about my installation and setup for the Bluetooth scanner and Torque Pro app on a spare Android phone. There's five basic steps that I'm going to cover here. Don't write these down. I would just watch these through the first time through so you can kind of get an idea. And I, I think you'll understand that you'll figure this out on the fly as I did as well too. So step one is to get the parts that you need. So get these things ordered. The parts you need is a Bluetooth OBD2 scanner and the link to the unit that I used in is gonna be in the video description below in case you just wanna go the easy route and get the same thing I did. It's inexpensive. I think it was $12. Get a spare smartphone. In my case, it was a Note 8, which is four and a half years old. There's no point in me selling it back to anybody, even though it works just fine. It's got a great display, and it was just time to upgrade. And I've got this spare Note 8 sitting around, which I was just going to use as a backup. And this is a perfect use and application for a spare Android phone. If you don't have one lying around, I'm sure you can buy one for relatively inexpensive, especially versus an iPhone. Now, can you do this with an iPhone? I think you can. I think there's apps on an iPhone that you can use, and I think there's scanners that you can buy which will talk to an iPhone. However, again, today, I'm just going to show you an Android example. Android is recommended because they're plentiful, they're less expensive, generally have great screens and displays. The iPhone can be made to work, although I will not cover that configuration. So, a little bit of homework for you if you want to make this work through an iPhone. And then you just need the Torque Pro app from the Google Play Store. Again, an Android solution for this. There may be different apps for iPhones. And then you just need some type of phone holder. You don't want this flying around your cabin every time you take a corner. So you want this on some type of phone holder. I'll show you an application that I use in the video later on in this. Step two, plug in the scanner. This is the easiest part. You just take this, that scanner, plug it into the OBD2 port, and away you go. And then after that, now you need to connect your phone to the scanner. So that's step three. But before we do that, we need to prep the phone first. And again, these are some hard lessons I had to learn for this, especially if you're taking a phone, which was a daily driver, a service phone for you, and you're, you've already upgraded to something else take these steps. Don't bypass step three because you'll regret it. I wasted a lot of time trying to use my current smartphone that was tied into Android Auto and Navigation Media, right? So I thought, well, oh, I'll just use the same phone, right? I'll just, I'll tie it to a different Bluetooth address. And all it does is just, you've got Android Auto fighting for the Bluetooth port. You Even if you plug it in, it's still fighting for it. Android Auto is extremely aggressive, as is Apple CarPlay. They're constantly trying to stay bonded to that phone because that's their purpose in life. And it just, it was, it just didn't work very well. I had to disable everything. So if you have a smartphone to find as your Android Auto or Apple CarPlay phone, leave it for that function. Don't make it do double duty. I had to completely disable Android Auto for it not to interfere with the OBD2 function just to see if this would work at all. So to me, I think this is a no-brainer. You should go with some type of dedicated OBD2 phone for monitoring these PIDs. Even if you do this, you're still going to have challenges. Follow these setup recommendations. Number one, find the Android Auto app and uninstall it. It is extremely aggressive. It's almost like spyware. You do not want the spare phone to be trying to battle your primary phone for Android Auto dominance every time you plug it in. Even if you do this, even if you do deinstall this app, 
it will still, every time I boot up my spare phone and plug it into a USB port so it can stay charged, it says, hey, would you like to install Android Auto? We see that you're plugged in. No, I don't want that. So make sure you deinstall that Android Auto app. Disable all app notifications. This drove me nuts. Otherwise, your phone will go nuts every time it picks up a Wi-Fi connection. All of a sudden, you're going to get all these notifications coming in. It's not good. Here's a, a video on how I do this. It's a simple process. So first of all, I'm going to swipe down to bring up the notification screen. And I see a notification. I'm going to slide that slowly to the right until I can touch on the gear. And then it brings up the notifications. And I turn those off. So it's the same process for all these that are bringing up notifications. You touch on the notification, slide it to the right slightly until you can expose the gear and then touch the gear. That'll bring you to the notification setup screen, disable the notifications. And here's the third step to set up this dedicated phone for your OBD2 monitor. Remove all of your Bluetooth connections. I, mean, I know how tough it was to pair all those things, but you really should remove all of them because you don't want any conflicts. You don't want the connection to your OBD2 dongle to get overridden by your headphones or some other device that's in your car, which you don't realize is there. Just remove all of them. And so you can see the paired devices there on the lower right. That's the only paired device is the OBD2 monitor that I have. Okay, now we have your phone all set up. Now we need to pair the phone to your OBD2 scanner dongle. I don't think I need to show you how to do this. I think you've paired stuff before. You bring it up on the Bluetooth screen and then look for that OBD2 name and then do the pair request. So we get into step five. This is the interesting thing. So now we have a connection, hopefully, between your phone and that OBD2 scanner dongle. We're going to set up the Torque app to talk to the OBD2 scanner. First thing we need to do is to configure Torque Pro. So this is what it looks like when you bring it up. And I'm sure any other app will have some kind of similar configuration setup. So the first thing we want to do is to hit that gear down there and make sure that we set up the settings. And so we're going to go into those settings, hit that settings, and then we're going to go into OBD2 adapter settings. And there's plenty of other things that you can also configure while you're in there, but let's just get this thing talking first of all. So we hit adapter settings, and then we're going to choose a Bluetooth device. So we're going to pick the connection type. Connection type will be Bluetooth. You can pick Wi-Fi if you want to. I think you should use Bluetooth. And then choose your Bluetooth device, and hopefully you've got that select paired device. You've got it paired already. You're good to go. You won't have to touch this ever again. Okay, I guess I lied. There were six steps. <laughs> there are six steps here. We need to now set up the Torque Pro to show the desired real-time PIDs. And the best way I can do this is, again, through a video. I'm going to show you a quick video on how you can add one and some of the other ways that you can set up your Torque Pro. This this will this is really the fun part because this is where you can kind of configure the different real-time PIDs to be able to monitor engine performance. Here is the Torque Pro interface. This is one of the customizable screens that you can set up different PIDs, different instruments, and you'll see how you can set up a different type of instrument to be able to measure something. So what I'm going to do is go into the menus and add a new reading based on a new PID. And so you'll see me scan through the different PIDs and I'll speed that up so it doesn't take too long. But in this case, what I'm looking for is to add a vacuum gauge. I wanna understand what the vacuum is on the intake manifold. So I can add that as a PID through another circular gauge that's on the cluster here. I'm going to speed this up here. What I'm looking for is the vacuum and turbo boost gauge PID. And in between there, you'll see all the green ones. Those are the ones that I can add as different PIDs.
Okay, I found the vacuum and turbo boost gauge. Now I'm going to add this as a small circular gauge and pick the location of where I want this on my screen and presto, I've got a vacuum and turbo boost gauge now. Now that we have our monitor configured, let's go ahead and mount this. And this is where I chose to mount it on the F-150, just to the left of the monitor. It's well within the field of vision. I don't have to take my eyes off the road really to see what's going on here if I need to see anything at all. But what I find particularly valuable is the state of the battery monitor, which typically will go in between 40% to maybe as high as about 65%. So that is really, really helpful to be able to understand what the state of the battery is, the hybrid battery, when you're driving a, an F-150 power boost. I'm gonna finish this video out with a, an example of what it looks like to drive, so face forward video driving, as well as a screen capture at the same time synchronized with the OBD2 monitor on this phone. All right, this is all battery. This is all battery. Oh, battery, battery, battery. And then we'll go up a hill in a minute. Okay, so here we go. We're going to go up the hill, up summit, and the engine's on. Notice how the battery is going down, it's contributing to the pole up the hill. Hey everybody, thanks for watching this video. I had a blast learning about OBD2 and adding this functionality and these diagnostics to my Ford F-150 Power Boost. I think it's going to be very important going forward. If you have any suggestions or any other comments for me, about OBD2, Torque Pro, or anything else like that, please let me know in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.